Just ask the fucking questions. Episode number 61. Expect more and pay less at Target. Come on, who doesn't shop at Target? Today's episode of the Keep It 100 Girl Show is brought to you by Target. Target's Black Friday ad has been leaked, people, and the deals are better than ever. Check out limited time offers on their dedicated Black Friday page, which can be found in this week's show notes. Adding to the holiday cheer, Target has now free standard shipping and returns on all your orders through December 20th. Link to this week's deals from my website on ninababel.com backslash podcast. And you're going to look for episode number 61. Or to make life really simple, you can just go through the show notes right there on your phone and click the Target shopping link. And you could do all the mobile shopping you want. Whatever your situation okay. is, well, don't prescribe to. I'm just, okay. I'm yeah, just that's laying out the different the, scenarios. That's the subject. Okay. Well, I had before it was called Hotline Bling. <laughs> there was this guy that I was way more interested in him. My first kiss was, and I was just like, well, what do you want? What do you want them to give you? You so in their head, you're not worried about what your head's doing. Just tell me, what is this? What is this? Because I'm not doing this anymore. The lessons learned long ago is that road people that got me to where I am today in this position, talking to you, and even in some cases as your voice. Without those experiences, people, I wouldn't be nearly the person I am and talking to you right now. We are here to forget all of our mistakes, girlfriend. Celebrate them and keep it moving. Welcome back to the Keep It 100 Girl podcast. As always, thanks for joining me for 50 Shades of Cray Cray. Live from Washington, D.C., I'm your host, Nina Babel. And if you're joining for the first time, I help both women and, you know, you men too, celebrate embarrassment in their lives. This is where I get both men and women to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. You know what? Even if it's totally embarrassing or super cray cray. This show is totally dedicated to empowering women of all ages. For women who don't know their worth or even your power. The strength of your power throughout your life. I'm going to talk to you about cool, relatable TMI moments that happen to us women on a regular basis starting from puberty all the way down to the M train. Real women are going to give their real advice and we're going to have fun. There's really nothing to be ashamed of. And sadly, the majority of women are still embarrassed when they're in need. And I want to change that mindset. One rule of my podcast is we overshare. Girly Nation, are you ready to keep it 100? My hand is raised. How about yours? Yes, I'm ready to keep it 100. I'm ready to keep it 100, girl. You know I'm going to keep it 100. <laughs> <laughs> So last week was a whirlwind of emotions, especially here in Washington, D.C. But we'll start with man karma. Dude, what goes around comes back around. And in most cases, it's him. But it's this weird dynamic because they don't really like you because they like you. They like you because you're moving away. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're trying to start to pull and they're like, oh, and it's the pursuit and the chase and the pursuit and the chase. But it doesn't start under good energy so that it never really progresses into a place where everybody's happy. Then I released a special edition of the Keep It 100 moment titled Orange is Not Our New Black. He is not my president. In this episode, I highlight the swirls of emotions, specifically from minority voices after last week's election results. I approve this message. And I approve this message. I approve this message. I'm proud to approve this message. Oh, I, I, oh my God. We're we're in, we're in weird time. We're going to be in weird times. 
Make America's Women Hotties and TikTok worthy again. Oh my God! <laughs> she had a student ask her if she was ready to be a slave again starting on Friday. I was up until maybe 2, 2.30 in the morning. Today's episode has to do with women not asking the right questions, whether, you know, we're starting a relationship, we're dating, or we're head over heels in a relationship. These are the head-scratching questions to determine, you know what, what we want. But you know what happens? We become digmatized. Mia's in her 20s, and you know what? She admits she hates the where is this going question. Asking it or answering it. I hate that whole where is this going yeah. conversation. That's why my last relationship ended. <laughs> you don't I, like that question? Well, or, no, I like clarification. Oh, no, no, well, that's women, but that's like, apparently that's a question that strikes tricks. fear in the heart of men. No, right. it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, uh, excuse me, is that true? I didn't hear you. <laughs> what is this? Where is our relationship going? Oh, oh, when a woman, I'm, I'm different because I only have female friends. Mm-hmm. So if someone, if a woman came to you, that doesn't strip, you, you don't get like... No, I I learned to, to make feelings. it pretty clear at the very beginning what it is. That's good. Okay. Yeah. I don't like when things. Well, what are what my expectations are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And sometimes that changes, but make that clear too. too. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I basically thought I was in a relationship. Like by the way, he acted with me. Mm-hmm. Like I met his family. Like you know all this stuff. He he made it very clear he wasn't interested in seeing any, anyone else. And then I, I don't remember what it was, but I got mad about something. And it freaked him out because he realized I thought I had the right to get mad about something mm. because I thought we were in a relationship. Wow. And apparently we were nowhere close to that. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sorry. Yeah. What, what do you think this is? Because it wasn't a booty call. <laughs> Weird. Like, right. Mm-hmm. It's complicated. And especially when you meet the family. <laughs> yes. We, that? Had, we had met both of our families. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I was like... Okay, mm-hmm. so your idea of a relationship and my idea mm-hmm. of a relationship are very different. <laughs> right. But you were, because like, I, don't, I don't know everything about you yet. Like, I haven't seen you in your darkest time. I was like, I don't let people see me in my darkest time when I'm casually dating someone. <laughs> that is not a thing. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, hey, hey, third date, let me tell you about Monday. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what? It was, it was just weird. I was like, you're a commitment so. so. <laughs> right. I think that's what it came down to. Mm-hmm. He wanted to keep dating me, but he didn't want it to be anything mm-hmm. that that would give me the right to be upset mm-hmm. uh, at anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, or to ask mm-hmm. questions. Right. Or, or to just, yeah, question. And I never questioned him about anything. It was just something stupid that, like, made me mad. And I, like, joked with him about it, but it, he was like, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Red flag. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the uh-oh. <laughs> Things thing just got committed. We know deep down inside what we should ask. But at times we soften our position or we punk out until the next time because we're too shy, nervous, or embarrassed to bring up the topic. (laughs) Stace is in her 40s. She's a single mom and divorced. You know what? She doesn't care for the single scene, nor the dating scene. I'll never admit that I love dating. I don't. I don't either. I, I, I hate it. It's so fake. Yes, I don't. You know that whole, like... You bring the representative, and even when you try not to bring the representative for either party, because you're you're, you're still trying to protect yourself at some extent. Like, yeah. like why are you here? I want to know why you here before I give you Love all of me, down, right? Because right. you and I know we've been here before, where we give the whole thing, and it's like, <laughs> can you eat this? No, just put it on the side for now. Yeah, you reach there and you're like, I'm I'm so confused. You were not who I'm I met. Wasting my time. Basically. And how many months or years is this later? So she was at her therapy session and she had this unprecedented light bulb moment that has given her a new whole outlook. And I know what what he, where he's at. Yeah. And I, the thing is, I didn't I never used to ask that question. It's funny how we don't ask questions that would save a lot of grief. It's funny how we don't ask questions and we keep getting bitten over and over. We still don't ask questions. I know, right? But I'm telling you, once you reach a turning point and the first time you ask is the most liberating experience ever. 
Because yeah. you heard. Yeah. You heard. So you can't come up with the, I didn't know. And he responded. He gave, you know. He responded. Then you were able to act. And the, yeah. Thank you for lunch. God bless you. Gotta go. Bye. Right. That was cool. So, and it's funny. Right when he said it, my mindset was like, well, I'm open to meeting. And I said it to myself because that's my new affirmation. I'm open to meeting someone new. And I said it then and there in my head because I'm saying it. I'm, I'm speaking it into existence. So he was someone new I met. I think he had a lot of qualities. I saw qualities in him that I would love to introduce for Bailey because he he always acts about her. I love people. I love that. I, the person I was dealing with before never really inquired about her. So he's always like, how's Miss Bailey? And he's interested in what she has going on. Right. So I, from him, I saw qualities that I would love to meet in a person who is there. So, mm. hey. Right. It's nice when every, somebody you meet can actually... Um, give back some positive to what your next yeah. adventure is. This audio was taken when Jermaine was married to her husband. Presently, she's now in her 40s and divorced with three kids. But nevertheless, her message is evergreen to any woman whose goal is marriage. I would say ask all the hard questions. And this is, this is one thing that I, I consistently say the people that are dating or, you know, are in a serious relationship. If your goal is marriage, then you need to be asking all the hard questions prior to. If you're, you know, your goal is just to hang out and kick it, and I mean, you know, that's not a, you may not even need to know that information because you're really just there for the moment, for the good time, you know what I'm saying? So but if you're interested in, in getting to know this person and looking at this person as a potential mate, you need to really ask all the hard questions, and we don't tend to do that dating. We tend to, again, this is where the sex makes it complicated, because you're, every question that maybe you want to ask, you don't, oh, I don't know, you know, you kind of second guess yourself because you're emotionally connected. Wondering what the hard questions are when you're sexing it up with someone, and then you know what happens? Things become clear as mud. So you want to listen up in this next clip. So when you're not when you're not connected emotionally, I mean, you want to say emotionally, you can still love this person, like this person, but sex takes it to another emotional level that you just don't always are not as clear. I think. And so asking hard questions. I mean, really, okay, what's up with the credit? What's how would you handle this? How would we? What if we have a blended family? How would we really discipline? the children and some things are just experience but some some questions people just don't even ask right oh i don't ask about his mother i don't ask about the relationship with his mother i don't you know ask how he feels about his father leaving him and really let's really let's stay on that point let me maybe ask that question three four five times in a different way um how do we resolve financial difficulties? What if I lost my job? What if I made more money than you made? What, I mean, how do you feel about me having my own account? What if you think different spiritually than I do? What if I became a Christian and you didn't? Why are you surprised, girlfriend? Jermaine goes through a laundry list of questions us women don't think about asking. Or you know what? We never bothered to ask until it was too late. I mean, these are questions that people just don't think about asking. And what ends up happening is when they come up in a relationship, you're like, Dad, I never knew he thought like that. Oh, I didn't even know she felt like that. Hmm. You know, because you never bothered to ask. It's more than asking questions. It's about looking at the nonverbal when you're hearing the verbal explanation or mansplanation, right? And then at this point, you have to give yourself the option to stay or to go if needed. And so a lot of the realities that people, the, the problems people have in their relationship, and I can, I can say that because I didn't ask a lot of questions, you know, with my husband. I didn't ask all the questions I felt like I should have asked. So here in our marriage, things would pop up. And I'm like, dang, that just threw me. Mm. You know, probably if I would have asked and then waited for the answer verbally and non-verbally, I probably would have positioned myself differently. Yeah, okay. 
you know, because it's not always the verbal answers, it's the nonverbal because, you know, take money. You know what I mean? You're only going to fight. Uh, uh, most of the co- people I know that are married are fighting about three things, sex, communication, and money. If you have issues with communication, you're probably not going to have sex. If you have a money issues, you're not communicating, you definitely still ain't having sex. If you ain't having sex, drink. I mean, it all just is either, you know, one thing or the other. Thanksgiving is a week and a half away. Love to get your thoughts or even affirmations by leaving a personal recorded message from Girly Nation. And this is a number that you can call. It's 573-919-0830. Let's start a coalition of positivity and clog the universe with good intentions as we approach the end of 2016. But you knew that. However, you ignored that red stop line that was shining bright and proceeded anyway. So it's like if you realize that you're self and you realize that in the dating was not a good money manager, y'all should have really talked about that before you got married. Because, you know, if you look up and you've got $12 in your account, well, what the hell? But you knew that. Yeah. Six months ago, you knew that two years ago that your your soon to be spouse had challenges with money. So why are you surprised? Right. You know. There are advantages and disadvantages to seeing your parents fight when you're growing up. In this next clip, Jermaine is going to point out, in her case, why it was so important and how it affected her marriage at the time. But if you're one of those women whose goal is marriage. You want to listen. Listen up. One thing that my husband and I did, we didn't make any rules of fighting. You know, and we've, at 10 years plus, we've had to learn how to resolve conflict. And, I mean, I didn't, I never saw my parents fight, ever. Mm -hmm. That was a benefit and a disadvantage because I never saw them resolve conflict. Huh. You know, so as a result... You know, I got married. I was like, oh, well, hell with you. Look, <laughs> I don't got to talk. Right. I don't got to deal with that. And, you know, because in my dating world, that's how I dealt with it. Like, oh, nigga, you don't want to talk? Boom. I'm hanging the phone up and I ain't going to talk to you. Here are the relationship rules in times of conflict and how to apply them during marriage. But you can't do that in a marriage. So we didn't have any, we didn't set those parameters. Look, if we're going to fight, here, here are the rules. Like, we, we're not going to go to bed and you hear that, not go to bed angry. That's easier said than done. Or I'm not going to bring your parents in this. I'm not going to call you at your name. I'm not going to, you know, there has to be some, some, some rules. You know, but these are things that people don't talk about in the day. Oh, we, this day, we have sex, we watch movies, we travel, we, you know, and if we have conflict, there, there, how do you resolve them? I mean, you, you deal with that prior to the marriage. Setting boundaries. You are not married to them or locked into a commitment. So before you pass go and collect that $200, in this next clip, you're going to hear about what those boundaries are. That would be my advice. Ask all the hard questions, set boundaries, and do not be afraid of what those answers will be because guess what? You're not married to them. You're married to her. And you would rather know and deal with it and, and resolve it or be able to say, whoa, that's just too much. Because now you're not committed. You're not, you're not locked into a commitment. It's easier to walk away. Marriage magnifies each of your faults. Know this. Some people, they don't want to walk away. They feel like they've invested three years. Oh, well, you know, we'll work it out. No, 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 no. Marriage magnifies those things. Right. You know, so if you, you know, you come in with good counsel, you guys come in with agreements, if you're honest with each other, as ugly as that may be, guess what? In your marriage, you've already laid so much groundwork that all this other stuff is just crazy. Go crazy. Girl, wild out, go crazy. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. These women admitted they hated asking or they failed to ask the needed questions. And you know what? They ended up in 
failed relationships, and in one case, a marriage. These are all the conversations that they're recommending you need to have from day one. At the end of the day, if a man really wants you, these questions won't scare him off. Sometimes too much time passes before things are really revealed. You know, you have a house, you have children, there's money invested. And you know what? All of that could have been avoided and come out straight from the jump if only questions were posed in a more forward, direct fashion, or women just didn't feel the need to just tone it down in terms of settling their expectations or dumbing down their expectations. I think if there was any valuable tip given and probably overlooked, it was to ask the same question multiple times to see what answer you're going to get, right? So that one question like, you know, what is your outlook on investments? Maybe you want to ask that five different ways and see how he answers it or she answers it. Sometimes it could be just a personality thing. Two people are not compatible, and you found that out in the beginning. That is what I call a blessing in disguise. My only concern is for you millennials, and that is that you're growing up on mobile apps. Everything is an app, a dating app, and you're making decisions based on first glance, which is just surface level. It's shallow first impressions and you know what in some cases it's just for hookup purposes too you need to get hip to this game called emotions feelings and girl savviness to determine what his man score is gonna be girl ask these questions in all of the phases of your relationship where it makes sense don't ask it all at once on the first date and just don't bombard him from A to Z. You know, you want to kind of strategically ask these questions and and make an informed decision. And that wraps up another episode of the Keep It 100 Girl Show. Your go-to girlfriend is here to empower you every week, ladies. This week's message is to continue asking the soft questions, right? You know, going easy, but you got to start asking the hard ones too. And furthermore, pay attention to the nonverbal first before the verbal and connect those dots. Benina brings socially and sexually awkward taboos out in the light that most of us only share with our girlfriends or you know what? We keep it to ourselves. I talk to my listeners like I talk to my own girlfriends with advice about failures, successes, embarrassing choices, and aha moments that put us all in check. If you would like the cheat sheet of questions raised during this episode, you can download them at bit.ly forward slash EP61. All right, if you want to share your story, I'm looking for some takers on the following topics. If you were an initiator of a rebound or a victim of a rebound, hit me up. If you don't want any kids and you want to tell me why, hit me up. And what's your feelings about angry sex? Drop me a line question or pitch your story to Nina at NinaBabel.com, right? So it's Nina, N-I-N-A, at Nina, and then my last name is Babe. With an L, NinaBabel.com. Even if it's something really, really small, don't hesitate because it's still a story. Every girl has a story to tell. So the Keep It 100 Girls show drop every Tuesday on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and now iHeartRadio. Connect with me on social. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. And I'll even help you out. You can use the handle at Nina Babel, and that's how you find me. That's my reel for this week. Smooches! You want to be-